And what inspired me to, to, to get into science is because there's no uh, sustainable development without uh, scientific research, very informed uh, uh, research-based type of decision mechanism. Uh, I am an applied mathematician by training. Why mathematics? Is because mathematics is the foundation of every field. Um, and then its application are found everywhere. You name it, in health and banking and uh, agriculture. Any sector of um, development use mathematics. And I, I, I call myself an applied mathematician is because we use the profound discovery of mathematics and see the application in very specific area of society. So I did my PhD in uh, computational applied mathematics. It was basically trying to complement uh, statistics. I will explain in a very simple language what I did. Um, everyone who does um, data analysis uh, use questionnaire. Uh, you cannot collect data if you don't design a questionnaire. The way we design questionnaire, the, the, the type of questionnaire we choose has an, an impact on the end result. So what statisticians used to do is to collect as much as possible variable and then from a population and then sample. And they sample based on some statistic techniques to say, um, you know, from, from 100 uh, individual, I'm taking 10% is population representative and something like that. And we, from a mathematical background and coming with a mindset to say, why do we do that? Would you complement that by just mapping data uh, from what you observe in the population to a mathematical space. So my research was de trying to develop an orbit theory, which basically means using longitudinal data um, versus what that does, which is cro cross-sectional uh, study. We say if you have a data set from a period of time, if you can develop a, a mapping between what is in data, the dynamics in data, and then the mathematical, mathematical space, since from a mathematical space we have a profound understanding of how things work, then you can inform things that's happening in the population level. And the way you do that is like you move from individual uh, level of data to population. But the way we do that was a very automatic way of just using that arbitrary plot orbit for every individual, using a number of questions, the answer that people give in question uh, at a given time, and then do cluster analysis, where you start asking the question because you see a cloud somewhere, and then you ask yourself, why are these certain individuals behaving this way? That's what I was kind of doing it. And the application was in um, uh, demography in general, but um, population study in particular. I was trying to demonstrate um, in rural South Africa what was causing a um, poor child to drop up and not do well at school. So previous study suggested that it was a social economic uh, status of uh, household in that poor area. And my study surprised the discovery by saying that it was not only that, but more importantly, it was um, um, temporary migration of biological mothers, which in a majority of household were household uh, breadwinner. They were not household head, because they were men who were kind of heading the household. And then this mother in uh, poor Pumalanga was moving to Johannesburg to work and then go back. So every single time, using my analysis, we were able to see that kind of change. Every single time they were out of a household, the attention of children was not there, and then you can see uh, the result. So that was what I, I, I did. So the theory, I mean, uh, the theory is there, and a uh, few of my colleagues are publishing a lot of paper on that. You can apply what I developed in my PhD in any sector of, uh, of society, be it in finance, where uh, if you have this kind of uh, very noisy data, and then you, have, you need to get some insight, not using traditional statistics, I think arbitrary suggests some new way of analyzing data. So first of all, why did I actually move from research with a PhD in computation and applied mathematics and just make that 180 degree shift in my career? And it's because I acknowledge that it was not a mistake to make that decision of using the background of science, mathematics in particular, but also get into that opportunity of going and learning about the technology because yes, as I said, mathematics is the foundation of any field the way we build technology, we use profound mathematics. So I moved to that level to uh, understand the business side of things, how things work, uh, where the jobs, the money come from, and use my, my, my background. And that's what I did by learning software development because I have uh, that background uh, in terms of consulting in software delivery. Uh, I have uh, many years of experience in that. And then I saw that there were two sides of the equation where you know the thinker on, uh, on this side, and then people who use uh, 
what these people are developing in real life and make, make application and services and product was on this side. But I look at myself kind of intersection. And I saw that I think basically people should talk to each other and we should look at interdisciplinary type of uh, engagement and projects. So what I'm doing at EMS, uh, why am I doing the, uh, that? Why am I passionate of driving the EMS industry initiative is because one should ask the question about what do we train people for? Why do we do science and technology for? Um, from an individual perspective, I think it's important for people to get a good job, good paying job, so that they can contribute to, uh, to the economy of a, any society. But we have noticed that for certain years, in the past one or two decades, the skills that we produce are from traditional university curriculum and those that are needed in the industry, there's a mismatch. Why is because of this kind of silos uh, that academia and then technology don't talk and business people and then uh, uh, researcher don't talk. So the EMS Industry Initiative is providing a platform to say, can we talk? Because at the end of the day, um, the blame game will be on the students who are kind of product from the factory. And they need jobs, but they have been trained in system that does not provide them the skills that they need. And come in a place where we develop a supply demand strategy. Supply from the skills perspective is what we're doing at the university, the curriculum, the capacity building thing that we're doing. On the demand side is where the jobs are. And innovation also plays a role. Like make people think more critically so that they know what they want to learn the way they want to learn, right? And provide them with kind of flexibility. So from M's perspective, that connection has even helped us uh, partner and identify very practical applied research topic that even the researcher who were thinking that they were only in the lab now are interested in, to, in working on very practical projects. We say that we, we're helping our business uh, move forward. Why would a re, uh, business uh, hire a researcher? First of all, if they don't have a research and development unit, <laughs> that's quite like a challenge. And uh, second is that um, business as usual does not disrupt the way we do business. Uh, I think uh, ambitious mission need change in mindset, the way you design your product and services. And it's very important when you talk about sustainability to have um, evidence-based type of uh, decision that you make. How do you do that? You research. <laughs> and without research, you will be speculating a lot. Um, and then also get researchers very excited because researchers, they don't do research uh, because of the money side. They want to help society. So if you make them use your, your infrastructure, your money, and uh, work on very practical problem to solve uh, situation challenging in society, they will be very excited. So yes, I think every business of people, whether or not they afford it, they should engage in a certain level of research so that the decisions are more better informed, uh, evidence-based uh, decision. And if they make that mistake, they will not sustain in the environment. Uh, they will not anticipate in terms of a trend in the technology for the specific business. Only researcher, um, maybe combination of research and business people can facilitate that um, roadmap in terms of a technology trend. I think it's key. Uh, there's no other way of going around that. Um, I want to revolutionize uh, the curriculum at the university. I think EMS provides an opportunity of rethinking the way you build the universities uh, so that it's not based on your, first of all, your social and economic background and, and your access is provided. Second is like um, talent, especially when you also consider the inclusion, which is putting women and men at the same room, giving them the same opportunity. People think by themselves, they have a freedom of thinking. Uh, so on the curriculum uh, side, on the skills supply side, I believe M should be the default institution to provide that, to take it off. Regardless of any sector, people, if someone from agriculture is listening to me in this interview, say that math in agriculture, what does it mean, really? But when you look at the data analysis, the chain in terms of from seeding to uh, uh, the, the, the time people actually use their product, there's a lot of data analysis and information management, but you need people or with certain skills to actually provide that. So that's number one. Um, be always able to adjust the curriculum, be open to input from the demand side to uh, provide training that respond to that demand, at, at number one. Um, number two is the youth empowerment, empowerment, because at the end of the day, if we're having PhD, would, not all of them will actually be lock, locking themselves in uh, labs, and, but they wanted to do exciting work, you should provide them with the environment to innovate. 
So I'm looking at the EMS uh, Industry Initiative as this one platform. Uh, one of my baby projects is to develop a platform for innovative um, design for African solution, where well, people don't like the word African solution, but I want to, to explain what I mean by that. Provide African uh, with a platform with cutting edge technology, with expertise in terms of mentoring, um, in an environment where they're free, they have all the resources to think and work on the project, but also for them to innovate. And because um, uh, someone was talking about the way we design PhD projects, for example, not many African PhD decide for their research project. I wanted the EMS Industry Initiative to have funding from the private sector where for example, EcoBank, a Pan-African bank should come and interact with us to say, we want to challenge your student. Uh, we want them to think about new services or products that we haven't think of. And I believe that M should be that platform where people who want to innovate will have a chance to do that. People who get our training will by default get jobs guaranteed because the skills that they have is actually needed. Industry will say, we know where to find the solution where we are actually challenged. Government will think that this is the program to, to fund because I think they can see the contribution of EMS in that initiative or EMS ecosystem as a whole in terms of decreasing um, uh, the unemployment of the youth. And then one thing about the future, which is many people want to know what will happen, um, population projection suggests that by 2050, the population of the world will double. Uh, Nigeria will be the third uh, populous uh, country in the world. And then the youngest population will be in Africa. I think the EMS industry initiative should challenge the young people to say, Shouldn't we anticipate in terms of uh, society that we want to build, the road that we wanted to move around, because it will be many of us, and then the type of hospital that we wanted to go to. So there's a lot of those questions. I think the platform should be there. And as I say, mathematicians like that. <laughs> and we also wanted to bring people from different uh, sectors to come and work as a team and move forward this kind of agenda. That's, that's my dream. So in the next 10 years, if we redo this interview, it's going to be... <laughs> kind of checking uh, off things that we have achieved and will be amazed, I guess.